friends, how you doing? Yes, welcome, welcome, welcome friends to another exciting and a brand new service here from Contagious Ministries and I am Michael Kabiski, your pastor of Contagious Ministries and this live stream today and um, we have a very, very exciting um, service for you today and we're live right here in Seattle Washington and um, we're coming at you we're actually gonna be I'm gonna be preaching on about how not that all of uh, Christians who people who claim that they're Christians can go to heaven um, that's kind of what the topic is about and fall kind of false prophet into that as well but um, and I'm going to tie that into some things. And, but right now, um, right now, um, I'm going to actually turn it over to somebody who I love so much. Um, I know you thought it was my wife, um, but um, unfortunately she's not right here, here tonight. And there is a reason for that. And um, actually it is a very prayer request. Um, it's not for her. Um, but I'll leave that to the end um, so that, yeah, things can, um, so we can pray at the end for that. But um, that's kind of a time where we, we, need, we do that, actually. actually. But um, I'm going to actually turn it over to my son, who's a seven-year-old, um, who loves Jesus so much. And... Um, Love his heart. I love what he wants to do. And it reminds me of so much of me when I was his age. So much. And um, I love him so dearly. And uh, so introducing to you, right here, Jaden Michael Kavisky. All right. Come on, Jaden. Come on, Jaden. Come on, Jaden. Here we go, Jaden. Here we go, buddy. Love you, buddy. This is my son, Jaden, right here. Love him so much. Love, I'm happy and excited that he loves the Word of God and he loves to talk about it, about, about it at school especially, too. That's so awesome. I love his heart. What he has for God. Love you, buddy. All right, so Jaden, here you are. Can you get up there? Ah. Big chair for the little boy. All right, take it away, Jaden. Now see what's going on with my uh, background. It's kind of weird. All right, Jaden. I'm gonna be preaching about. So it's, you're tying it into some things. Yeah. All right. Okay. What do you? What some verses do you uh, have today for us? Genesis one twenty eight. God blessed them and said to them, "Be fruitful and increase number full. I mean, number fill the earth with and subdue it. Rule over the fish of the sea and the birds in the sky and over every." living creature that moves on the ground. Samuel 1444. Is that 1 Samuel? Yeah, it's 1 Samuel. Samuel. Let the nations 
nations tumble. He sits in curves between turn. Cher cherubim? Cherubim, let the earth shake. This is one of my favorites that I've had in this for a long time. Psalm 103, verse 1. Verse 1, 2, 3, and 4, and 5. Praise the Lord, my soul, all my most beginning. Praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, who has forgotten all his benefits, who forgives all your sins. He heals all your diseases, who reminds your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with God. Things so that your so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Whew. Got a lot there for us, buddy. Yeah. Luke Luke chapter fifteen verse fifteen. So he went and heard himself out chosen of that country who sent him films to feed pigs. Verse 16. He longed to fill so much the pods that he how many more you got? Two more? Yeah, I think so. Uh, Acts 22, verse 15 and 16. You will be his witness to all people what you have seen, heard, and know what you're waiting for get up base and wash your your calling 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 on his name this is this one's a long one family be strong in the lord his mighty power puts the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against devil, the devil's shames. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rules, against the other. Uh, others, I think, against the power of dark, dark world, and against this, the spiritual for forces of evil and heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may This how we know that love is Jesus Christ laid down his life for us and we ought uh, to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters all right buddy thank you buddy good reading awesome Oh, you're
your bedtimes in a little bit, so you know. <laughs> but you can watch that. Alright. Well, I'm back. Um, I'm going to teach to you today about, um, about how being a Christian, how about saying that you're a Christian um, doesn't mean necessarily that you're going to church. Um, and about false prophecy about that as well. One second. Sorry. No. Good. Okay. Going to church doesn't make you a Christian. Just like um, a car being parked in a garage doesn't make it a part of a garage. There's a difference between doing what Jesus did and being like him claiming that you know him and being religious doing religious things and having religious traditions there's a difference the fact is that religious people were the ones who killed Jesus and wanted him dead Friends, um, it's true, but um, I forgot one something. Whew, I forgot something, friends. Most important, I need to open in prayer. Most important. Most important. Dear Lord. I thank you for this day. God, I thank you for what you've done, God. I thank you for what you are doing right now, Father God, as we speak, Lord. Thank you, Father God. You are merciful. You are the great I am. Everything that you've done for us, God, we owe it all back to you, God. We are unworthy, God. We are not worthy of your love or your grace and your mercy, God. God, help to the pe these people here, God, that are listening, God, on this live stream, or God, on this YouTube video, Lord. God, let them know, God, that that not that everything that they hear, God, that is about Jesus, is totally the truth that people say, God. Help them discern what is right and what is wrong, God. And God, I pray, God, I pray that you uh, just pour out your spirit upon me today, God, as I preach. God, as you give, as you have given me this message, God, to tell others, God, not God, to uplift myself, God, but to up to lift your name today. God, I pray for your anointing, God, from my head to my toes, Father God, from my toes to my head, Father God. I pray for your anointing, God, to flow upon me, God. Thank you, Father God. God, thank you for what you've done in this ministry, God, in the past, Father God. Thank you, God, for what you're doing, God, that I don't even know, God, what you're doing right now, God, but you do, God. Somehow you orchestrate all things together, Father God. God, I thank you for what you're going to do, Father God. I thank you for really what you're going to do, God. Things we don't even know. Things we've never even dreamed or imagined, God. Thank you, Father God. You're awesome, God. Love you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God. All right, so I will... The disciples of the followers of Jesus stayed with him until his death, and even after his religious, after his death, friends. You know, religious people can actually, in a way, be a false prophet. Prophet, sorry, prophet. They go and attend church. They believe in God. 
but they do not have a per personal relationship with his son Jesus. They don't make them Lord. They don't make him Lord of their life. And throughout the week, they live like the world. And it's part of my expression, but they live like hell. And how they and how they want to. And in Matthew um, Matthew seven fifteen through twenty three says, "Watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing." In, um, okay. Beware of false prophets who come to you as sheep, harmless as sheep, but in wolves they tell you, but they're really wolves that tell you apart. You can detect them by the way they act, as you can identify a tree by its fruit. You don't pick grapes from the thorn bushes or figs from the thistle. A healthy tree produces good fruit, and an unhealthy tree produces bad fruit. A good tree can't produce bad fruit, and a bad tree can't produce good fruit. So every tree that does not produce good fruit is chopped down and thrown into the fire. Yes, the same, yes, the way to identify, identify a person, a tree or a person, is by the kind of fruit that they have produced. Yeah. And I will continue with verse 21. It says, Not all people who sound religious are godly. They refer to me as Lord, but they still won't enter the kingdom of heaven. The decisive issue is whether they obey the obey my Father in heaven. On judgment day, they will tell me. They will tell me, Lord, Lord, we prophesied in your name and cast out demons in your name and perform many miracles in your name. But I will repl reply, I never knew you. Go away. These things you you did were unauthorized. So what this is saying, what this says, is not everyone who goes to church and believes that there is a God gets into heaven. Not everyone who prays for others gets into heaven. Not everyone who reads the Bible gets into heaven. And not everyone who teaches and preaches the word of God gets into heaven. The truth is that even Satan and his demons know the scriptures. Now, Satan used it against Jesus in the wilderness for 40 days. You know, with religion, it comes power. With religion, comes, but with relationship comes submission, friends. Religion comes with do's and don'ts and a list of rules of what to do. And relationship just means you're available for God, what God wants you to do, and what the Word of God says. And in the Word of God says, in Matthew 23, Jesus even called the religious script, uh, leaders hypocrites. And he warned them against um, them, and he told them not to follow their example. Because um, he told them that because they do not practice what what they preach. It even says, um, it even says that they all they do is put on a show. In the last days that we are living in, there have been many false prophets claiming the end of the world is near, friends. So many. When the Bible clearly states that no one knows the time. And the day that Jesus will come like a thief in the night, not even the angels in heaven. In Matthew 24, uh, 32 through 34, 
It says, there have also been false prophets claiming that they were or are Jesus. Um, I mean, sorry. <laughs> there were, there's also false prophets claiming that there was God the mother. And um, I've experienced some of those fathers, followers of God um, who have come to my do uh, doorstep and they were basically false witnesses to a prophet, you know what, who even claimed that he was Jesus himself. That's ridiculous. Ridiculous. In 1 Timothy 1 through 4, it says, Don't let um, wait the waste time. Hold on one second. <laughs> In First Timothy, turn to it, one through four. Actually, it's four. Don't let these people waste time in endless speculation over myths, spiritual pedigrees, for these things only cause arguments. They do not help people live a life of faith in God. So what this is stating is we must not argue about doctrine, friends. And the chapter goes on and talks about how that there are other teachers who have missed the whole point of not arguing. And they would rather argue about doctrine and rules and rather be teachers of the law, which is more of a religious type of mentality. And Peter, and Second Peter, Two, the chapter talks about that there will be many false prophets in Israel and among the world and among the world. <laughs> Verse 2 and 3 states, Many follow their own evil teaching and shameful mentality because of them. Christ and his true way will be slandered. In their greed, they make up clever lives to get a hold of your money. Gut com God command them long ago, in the dis their destruction is on the way. So the chapter keeps on going, stating that even the angels who have sinned, when they went along with Luc Lucifer, where they were casted into hell, and they were that they were, will be very punished, that these people will be very harsh punished for false prophets and those, the followers of these false prophets. They will be very harsh punished. And 1 John 4, it warns about the prof, false prophets. Verse 1 through 3 says, Dear friends, do not believe every spirit these spirits are either, either they're from, from God because many false prophets have gone into the world. This is how you can re recognize the Spirit of God. Every spirit that acknowledged Jesus Christ has come in flesh is from God, but that every spirit does not acknowledge Jesus Christ is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which has already come, which is, you heard is coming, and now is in the world. Now, friends, we must test these spirits to see if they are really, truly, are really speaking the truth, and if they really are from God or not. They could have they could be saying things of God to try to get you to believe what they're saying. In Matthew 10, 16. Matthew 10, 16. It 
says, Look, I am sending you out as a sheep among wolves. Be weary as snakes and harmless as doves. This means we need to be wise and we need to test the spirits that are coming off of these people, friends. God has put us out there. Friends, we must not listen to everything that someone says about God. I believe everything that they say, they could try to trick you and twist the scriptures and use it for their power and for their advantage. For power, for money. And they may claim that they are Christian and go to church. But if they do not have a personal relationship with God, with a personal relationship with Jesus, they are nearly just a type of a religious person. These people claim that Jesus was was God. And sometimes just a they claim that they, he's just a way to God. But Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. You know what? Maybe you have not made Jesus the Lord of your life. The word Lord actually um, it means actually supreme ruler. And maybe you have nearly just believe in following rules of your church or what the Bible says and you think you're just a good person for believing in them. You know what the, the truth is? You are more of a person who is a false prophet kind of in a way. But the good news is that Jesus doesn't care for what you do for him. Friends, he doesn't. He cares about for you and what's already been done for, for you so that you can have a true, authentic relationship with Him. He has His arms wide open for you, friends. And He says, yes. He wants you to say, yes, I want a personal relationship with you, Jesus. Um... Friends, we need to be aware that there are false prophets out there. There are false prophets out there that are trying to to get you to believe in them. And this is what the Antichrist is trying to do as well. He's going to get you to believe in him. He's going he's gonna to say, well, I am Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Follow me. Follow me. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am Jesus Christ. I'm already here on this earth. And um, he's going to lead them into trickery. He's going to lead them into getting the mark of the beast. And, um, it's sad. It's, it's crazy what some people believe. It's ridiculous. And, um, you know, we, we as, <coughs> excuse me, we as pastors, we're responsible to teach you the difference. We're responsible to tell you that there are false prophets out there. trying to get you to believe them. And you know what? Um, like I was saying, like, like I, was, I, told, I told you earlier, that you need to test the spirits. If you do not feel the Holy Spirit off of them, they are not of God. They, they're not of God. But they're filled with the Holy Spirit. You can feel it off of them, friends. And 
and I mean we need to be aware because there are people unfortunately there are people that are on TV that are on I'll be honest with you there are people that are on um this company right here not to not to disrespect them anyway but there are people that are on TVN there are people that are on Daystar that want you to send money, 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 money just to fill their pocket. And like I was reading before, profit there will people there will be people that are like that, that will do that. And they want you to to bless their pocket instead of giving the money towards the ministry that goes out to help people to further the kingdom of God. And this is crazy because they'll be selling like I mean, I I don't know much about it. And I'm not I'm not really to judge, but there are people that are selling like prayer cloths or something or or Miracle water, something like that, and I don't know that. To to me personally, that just seems kind of a false kind of profit type of thing. It doesn't not seem right. Um, where in the Bible here do you see Jesus? Um, where anywhere in this Bible, in this holy word of God, do you see Jesus selling prayer cloths? Do you see that at all anywhere? No. He came to heal the sick. He came to heal the blind. He came to heal the crippled, friends. He came so we can have life and life to the fullest. And have a relationship with him. That's why he came, friends. That's why he came. He came to have a relationship with us. Not so that we can believe in lists of do's and don'ts and full of garbage like that. Friends, the truth is that religion kills. But Jesus saves. That's true. And, uh, we just need to be aware of what's going on around us, friends. Of this day and age. It's it's kind of scary. It's We need to... Yes, God says that we are not to judge others. But yet it does, in a way, it does state that we need to judge what we are allowed to judge other Christians of what they're saying about God if it's true or not and if maybe maybe you're into a church that I don't know maybe you're in a church right now that you're not agreeing with what the pastor is saying and you're kind of skeptical friends I would I would personally I would seek another church If you're not f feeling the Holy Spirit off your pastor, then, friends, I, I I would leave that church myself. That's just me. It's, I mean, we have to, we can't, there's churches out there that are pleasing men instead of pleasing God. And in a way, I don't know about that. It's it's kind of scary. And friends, if you're in a church that just has a real list of do's and don'ts and religious and kind of kind of you know doing the same thing over and over again and. Um, you know, they're back in the day, back in the, 
I don't know, the 1960s, maybe even further. There was even some churches that wouldn't even let you dance inside the church. But yet, in the Bible, in the full Bible, it says, dance like David danced. You know, it's... It's man-made. Religion is man-made, but having a relationship with Jesus Christ is God-made. It's God-made, friends. So, I just thank you. I mean, um, I just urge you to to test the spirits off of pastors, off of people. If they're saying something that's not right don't believe it but I'm gonna pray right now I'm gonna pray right now if you have a prayer request I urge you to um, go to our web page or our Facebook and um, I urge you to to do it right there on the spot, you can submit your request, and I will pray for it live on the air. We do not, um, we won't. If you don't want us to, we'll leave information out. Um, we do not sell you information at all. Definitely not at all, friends. It's just to pray for. It's just to pray for you. It's just to pray for whatever's going on in your life. Right now, I have an urgent prayer request. Um, it's for my father-in-law. His name is Robert McKinney. And today, he had to go to the hospital. He is a dialysis patient. And um, he had surgery on Monday. And he had... He was supposed to have... Um, he went to dialysis yesterday. They told him he could not dilate because his um, hookup, I'm not sure exactly what it's called, but it was clogged with blood. He had a blood clot in it, and he could not dialysis. He could not dilate yesterday. And so... They said that he would have to have surgery today. And so, this morning they got a phone call from the doctor and also said that they said that his potassium was really high. His potassium was supposed to be a 3, and unfortunately it was higher than that. It was at a 7. So they had him go to the ER. They wanted him to go to the ER, straight to the ER, friends. And so he did. He went to the ER. Um, he had a doctor that, unfortunately, um, the family, um, my family and my extended family, um, have not really had a very good not relationship, you could say, but not a very good understanding with her, unfortunately. And um, she needs prayer as well as a doctor. She needs God, and she needs God to do something in her life to change her. But this doctor let her go, home, let him go home early. He was weak. And fortunately, he fell a few times here at home when he came home. About three times. And we had to, um, we had to call the ambulance. They had to come and they had to bring him back to the hospital. And so that's where he is right now. He's back in the hospital. In uh, the same hospital where he was. Um, just needs your prayers. He needs your prayers right now. He's not doing that great. 
he uh, he's a counselor. He's a Christian counselor. He has been as well, and he's taught me a lot of things. Sometimes he gets on my nerves, to be honest with you. <laughs> but that's what family's for, I guess. <laughs> but um, but yeah, he's a great guy. And um, I want I want my son to come here with me. Jaden, will you come come here with me? You want to play, pray for Papa? You want to start it off, bud? You do. <clears throat> Dear Lord, we pray for Papa. Pray for Robert. Pray for Bob, whatever you want to call him. God, we pray for him, God, that you just, you just be there right there, there in the room with him, Lord God. Right where Heather is, right where Ruth, his wife is. God, be there in the midst of them, God. Be there right now in the midst of them in that room, Father God. God, I pray that you put your angels around them and around Bob, God, and you protect them. Whatever is going on, God, I pray for the doctor's wisdom, God, that you give them wisdom, Father God. That you give them wisdom to know what they're doing, Father God. God, give, the, give Heather, give Ruth, give them, God, give them rest, Father God. Give them, oh God, you just give them, oh Jesus, you just help them, God. You just calm them, God. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God. You just, you're just right there, God. Right there. Be right there right now at this very second, God. At this very moment, Jesus. Thank you for thank you for Bob, God. Thank you for what he's he's taught Jaden here, Lord. What he's taught Lily, Father God. God, what he's taught Heather, Father God. And God, what he's taught me, Lord Jesus. God, I thank you for your healing, God. God, have your way right now in this situation, Lord. Right now in this situation, God. God, it's your will be done, Lord, in this situation, Father God. It's not our will be done, God, but it's your will be done, Father God. Your will be done, God, on earth as it is in heaven, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Like the song is saying, Lord, you are good, Father God. God, you are good, Lord. Lord, God, thank you, Lord. God, thank you for all that you have done, Father God. Thank you for what you are doing, Father God. God, I thank you for what you're going to do, Father God. Lord, you said by your stripes we are healed, Father God. And I'm praying for healing right now in the power of Jesus' name. I'm praying for healing right now, God. Right now in that room, God. You just heal Bob McKigney right now. Right now. Let your power just flow in that room. Let your power just flow the power of Jesus' name. Heal him, God. Touch his life, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for him, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus.
Yes! Holy Spirit is here, bud. Holy Spirit is here. Jane, I love you. Love you, buddy. Friends, I want to I want to know that I love you as well, friends. I love you guys. I love you guys. You guys are awesome. You guys are awesome. Aren't they, buddy? Mm-hmm. Tell them they're awesome. You are awesome. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. Give me a high five. Yeah. All right, friends. We got some big, exciting changes coming to Contagious Ministries. We're actually going to do a service as well on Sunday. Get ready because my friend Jim, James or Jimmy, whatever you want to call him, he goes by either or. He will be here on Sunday. And I believe he'll be t- telling his testimony. And I think he's going to bring something with, somebody with him. And uh, we're going to see what God's going to do. Even more. Even more. Even more. This is awesome. Thank you, guys. I thank you so much, guys, for watching this. I thank you so much. I thank you for what, believing and the vision that God has given given us. I just want to remind you that there is a book that I have been writing. And uh, it will be available here in March. Um, all, it, all of it is... It's God breath. It's God given. It's what God has given me to, to preach to the nation. To the world. And that's what that's this what I preach on tonight was something that he shared with me to put inside the book. And I just want to let you know if you believe in the vision that God has given and you want to hear it even more in a book format and you want to read it in a book format. Um and if you really if you really want that and you really want to share it to with others, I urge you just to um, be a part of our ministry by donating to help fund that. It's going to cost a lot of money for that. Uh, personally, I do not have that type of money to do that. If I could, I would. And I'm being honest to you um, because it is a lot. It's going to go out into the stores. It's going to go out into Christian bookstores. It's going to go out to non-Christian bookstores. Heck, who even knows? Maybe even Walmart, even Target, maybe to Macy's. Uh, I don't think they sell books, but um, everywhere that fine books are sold. And it's not, it's not to make Michael Kabisky here rich. That is not what this is about. Not what this is about. And I'm being strict on that. That is not what it's about. It's to glorify the name of God. It's to get the name of God spread to other countries, into other worlds, and to the uh, to other nations, not other worlds. What am I saying? I'm not gonna go to like Jupiter or something like that. <laughs> to uh, you know, to other nations of the world, to further the kingdom of God, to make it go into where it's never gone before. And friends, I urge you just to give if you can. Give if you can. You can check that on our Facebook page. Um, check out um, also as well um, the Contagious. It's called the Contagious Christian is the name of the book. Search for that on Facebook. 
become a friend of that page. We'll update you more about the book on that page rather than the Contagious Ministries page. Um, it's a separate page for it, but um, yeah, buddy. Yeah. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that God awesome? What? I can't hear you. Yep. You said God is awesome? God is awesome. No, say it loud, bud. God is awesome. Say it like you mean it. Say it like you mean it. Say it like you mean it. God is awesome. Can you do a pump, a fist pump? When you say it, you do that? Ready? Yeah. We'll do it together. One, two, three. God is awesome! Yeah, buddy! And uh, one more thing, really quick. Ha 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 ha! Go Seahawks! Go Seahawks! I drink to that. Only water. Peace! Love you guys.